Hey guys and welcome to this brand new episode on GSAP Animation. Today we are going to explore another interesting feature from the GSAP library. So as you can see on my screen, we are already inside Visual Studio Code and I created a sample skeleton for our HTML. We are going to modify this HTML file to match the animation that we are seeing just now. So I'll begin with a section tag which will have a class as intro. You will see that I'm using the image shortcut which are available inside Visual Studio Code. The shortcuts are very handy. So I'll advise you to go ahead and start exploring these shortcuts. It will save a lot of your time. Anyways, now inside this session, we are going to have two separate parts. The first part is going to contain the text. The second part is going to contain the image. So I'm going to define a container for our text. So div dot main text. Let's press enter. Inside this, I'm going to add a sample title. Let's call it as what is virtual reality. This is our question. Made a mistake. Let me just correct that and I will put a question mark over here. And we are going to add some meaningful description. So it will add as a definition for this particular question. So let me just go ahead and add three different div tags. Div description. So I need it to be repeated thrice. And inside that I want another nested tag called as line. Let's go ahead and define this virtual reality as computer generated simulation. So I'm going to call the first line as computer, second line as generated and third line as simulation. That completes the definition for our question and the text part. Now let's go ahead and add the CTA for our page. So I'm again going to use the image shortcut div.cta inside that we are going to have a button. Let me go ahead and add a title for our button. So I'll call it as more. Now that completes the textual definition for our first part. Now let's go ahead and add the second part that is our image. So I'm going to add another div tag and I'm going to call a class as anim. Inside this, we are going to use the typical image tag with the source as a file, which I already downloaded inside the assets folder. The file name is virtualreality.svg. This file I have downloaded from unraw.co, which is a very fantastic website. You can get a lot of illustration and all those illustrations can be used in your personal project. You can even use it in your commercial project as well. So go ahead and start using the illustrations which are available on the website. They are really fantastic. Okay, we need to close this image tag. So we are done with the HTML structure definition. Let me just save it so that you can see how it looks like on the screen. So this is how it is getting rendered inside Chrome. We have a text and then we have the image. Now image is looking quite big. The text is looking very small. Don't worry about it. We are going to correct all of this layout related constraints in a while. All right. I just changed the layout of Visual Studio Code and Chrome so that we can see the changes or the preview of the code that we're going to add. So let's go ahead and define the style sheet. So I'll just begin with the style tag first. Now inside this style, we are going to fix the box sizing for our elements. So I'm going to use the wildcard selector star and I'm going to say box sizing is going to be border box. This will fix all the padding, margin or width and height related issues. Now I'm going to define some global level styles for all the elements. To begin with, I'm going to make use of the body tag and inside this body, we are going to set the margin as zero. padding as zero and then I'm going to use the font size as 13 pixels. So font size is 13 pixels. The font that I'm going to use is Montserrat, my favorite one. Make sure that the font is available on your machine. Otherwise the changes will not get reflected. Let's go ahead and now define the background color. So our background color is going to be black. For that I'm going to use a hex value which is going to be 0, 0, 0. And then we are going to fix the foreground color as white so that our text is visible on the screen. That looks good. I need to make sure all the elements which are displayed in the body section are aligned in the center. So I am going to make use of the flex layout. So display is going to be flex. Justify content is going to be center. Let me save it so that we can see the instant changes. Yes, the background color has changed, the text color has changed and all the content are now centered aligned. 
now let's go ahead and fix the layout for our section and as we already know the class name is intro I'm going to constrain the width of this section class I'm going to set it to 80% so width is 80% the height is going to be 100 vh so it occupies the entire height of the page the display is going to be grid and I'm going to make use of the grid template columns to ensure that our text and image is aligned properly so the first column is going to have a width of 600 pixels and the second column is going to occupy the available width so I'm just going to save an FR let's go ahead and set the position for this section because we are going to animate certain items and the default position static doesn't work well with the animation we need to change it to anything other than static so it could be absolute or it could be relative or whatever else that you want to set it but just don't leave it as a static okay now that we are done with the position part let's go ahead and make sure all the items are aligned to the center so align item center and i will save it you will see that the things have changed a little bit let me just maximize the chrome you can see everything is looking good but our image is still big we are going to fix that in a while let's fix the width of the image so i'm going to make use of the css class selector dot anim inside that we have an image tag the width is going to be let's say 700 pixels and height is going to be 400 pixels so I'll just set that looks good and we need to make sure that the image gets aligned at the end of the grid cell so we are just going to set it at justify self and let me just save it now image looks much better it is scaled down and it is aligned nicely at the end of the grid cell looks good let's fix the text part as well so to begin with i'm going to set the title first so our title class it is going to have a font size of 3 rem which will be nothing but like 39 pixels the default root size or the root text size is 13 pixels multiplied by 3 that becomes 39 pixels the line height i'm just going to set it to 3 rem again that looks good let me just save it okay our text is now much bigger now let's go ahead and change the style settings for the individual line items that are just displayed below it so i'm just going to say description dot line inside that we are going to set the font size let's set it to 2 rem we'll set the position as relative and also for this description wrapper tag that we added we are going to set a property called as overflow and it will be initialized to a value as hidden this is very much required in order to animate the text so the next element that we are going to style is the button so let's select that so we have a button inside the CTA container I'm going to set the border radius first so border radius is going to be 10 pixels then I'm going to set the border as 0 I'll set the padding padding is going to be top and bottom padding is going to be 8 pixels while the left and right padding is going to be 40 pixels let me just save it let's see how it looks like looks much better let's go ahead and change the background color of this button so we have a background color and I'm again going to use a hex value for this let's set the background color as 3177 fe let me save it now it's quite visible on the screen looks much better now let's go ahead and change the foreground color for the button as well so I'm going to set the color as white so I'll use again a short code and I'm going to change the font size as well so font size is going to be 10 pixels it is going to be a bit more smaller let just save it now the button is looking much nicer and with this we have completed the style sheet definition for our page let me just maximize it but now it is looking much more static we need to add some juice to it yes we are going to make use of the gsap animation library to bring it to a life let's go ahead and do that all right so we are back inside visual studio code and now we are going to go ahead and use the gsap api timeline 
So I'm going to first begin with the script tag. Create a JavaScript variable called as T. I'm going to assign a value as gsap.timeline. This creates an instance of timeline and assigns that object to the T variable. Now you might have a question that what is this timeline? In simple terms, timeline enables you to sequence a set of animation. Apart from that, it gives you a much more fine control over the animation. You can start it, you can pause it, you can stop it, you can increase the speed of it, you can run it into the reverse direction. A lot of things which can be achieved using this powerful timeline feature. Let's go ahead and start defining the animation. So the very first thing that we are going to do is that we are going to animate the title. So let's go ahead and call a from function on this t object. So t.from we require the CSS selector. So we need to select the title. The second argument is the actual animation. We are going to animate our title for one second. So duration is going to be one. And we want to make sure that the title comes from the top. So I'm going to change the Y property of it. I'm going to assign a value as minus 20. Also the opacity is going to be 0 0.5. So it will be a bit faded in the beginning. Let me just format the code. And if I'll just save it, we'll see that our title just drops from the top. I'll just refresh the page again. The animation is getting applied and it is happening once. Okay, let's go ahead and complete the animation for rest of the elements. So again, one of the fantastic feature of timeline is that you can chain all the animation properties. You don't have to again call t.from or t.to. Just press the dot and you have a function available. So I'll just call from function again. I'm going to first select the description, the individual lines that are displayed below the title. Okay, this is the CSS selector for that. The second argument is going to be animation. And what we're going to do is that we're going to set this animation for one second. And we'll make sure that the text actually comes from the bottom and then it appears on the screen. So we're going to set the Y property as 80. Let me just save it so that you can see how it looks like. That looks much better. So let me go ahead and complete the entire animation for our page. Are you ready? Looks like we are done with the animation part. I will just save it so that we can see the effect of this animation on the screen. I just maximize the chrome window and I will just refresh it again so that we can see it properly. Our title is appearing, description is appearing and then you can see that our image is also getting levitated. So that looks very fantastic. Now you might have a question that why we are using timeline when the same thing can be achieved using stagger. Now the question is pretty much valid. The difference is that with the help of stagger you need to identify the specific duration between each animation and if anything changes between that animation you will have to recalculate all the values for the staggered animation that's not the case with the timeline in case of timeline you can simply create an animation and then chain them together and this will create a fantastic series of animation i hope you must have learned something new from this particular video i'm just going to wrap it up over here with a promise that i will see you soon in the next one Till then, take care and build something.